This Adobe Captivate training video will demonstrate the Nebraska Astronomy Applet Project's Rotating Sky Simulator. It is part of a series of videos designed to jumpstart faculty usage of simulations in the introductory astronomy classroom. Each video will quickly describe the functionality of the simulator and then provide branching navigation to video segments that demonstrate the operation and important applications. Suggestions for using the simulation interactively in the classroom will be included throughout. The Rotating Sky Explorer simultaneously displays, one, the entire celestial sphere from an external view on the left, like one would use to describe celestial equatorial coordinates, and two, a horizon diagram on the right, the half of the celestial sphere visible from a certain location on Earth at a certain time. The capability exists to create stars that appear on both diagrams, either at random locations or to drag them to a specific location, to change the location of the observer, and to advance time. This simulator illustrates the rotation of Earth without the effects of revolution around the Sun. So one Earth rotation corresponds to one sidereal day, 23 hours and 56 minutes. This simulator is useful for teaching horizon coordinates and how they relate to celestial equatorial coordinates, star trails, and declination ranges. Many controls in this simulation like changing the location of the observer by dragging the cursor on the Earth map, the animation controls, and star trails are quite intuitive. This section will focus on the controls that are not so straightforward. Most of this is covered in the simulator's help menu. Note that we can manipulate either sphere by clicking and dragging. To create a star, simply click Add star randomly, and you will create a star in the celestial sphere that will be visible in both views. Note that you had no control over that star's location, but you can drag it to any location on either sphere. You can also type in coordinates for the selected star, and it will move to that location. However, we can create a star wherever we want by holding down the shift key on a certain location on either sphere. Similarly, a star is deleted by holding down the delete key and clicking on it. Let me create a star at the North Celestial Pole and also at the North Point on the horizon. I'm holding down the shift key Only one star may be selected at a time. Both the celestial equatorial and the horizon coordinates are given for the selected star. Simply click on a star to select it, click again to deselect it. Note this is how one measures a coordinate in this simulation. You create a star and drag it to the position of interest and then read off the star's coordinate. Let's do this for the west point on the horizon. To teach horizon coordinates, I will select show labels and we can see the zenith point, the point directly above the observer, and the nadir, the point directly below the observer, labeled. The observer's meridian is the circle of constant right ascension that passes through the north point on the horizon, the north celestial pole, the zenith, and then the south point. Let's create a star. Its azimuth is measured along the horizon and is shown as the gray coordinate. Altitude is shown as the white coordinate. We can use this simulation to test students' understanding of horizon coordinates. Let's ask students about a few locations. What are the coordinates of the south point on the horizon? We can then drag this star there and use its coordinates to provide feedback. We could also drag a star to any location and ask about its coordinates, but note that coordinate values are shown by default when a star is selected, so you would have to click rather quickly on the star to turn these off. A better way to do this is to use star patterns, which do not list their values by default. Let me turn on the Big Dipper and pose the following question. What are the coordinates of the end star in the handle of the Dipper? 
we can then click on it to provide feedback, click again to turn it off, possibly animate to a new location and ask students again. We can also turn off the Big Dipper and turn on Orion, so there are several objects that we can position to where we want them and then ask questions about their coordinates, for example, like the middle star in the belt of Orion. At every latitude on Earth, except the equator, an observer can see one celestial pole in the sky. If you are located in the northern hemisphere on Earth, you will see the north celestial pole above the north point on the horizon at an altitude equal to your latitude, about 41 degrees for the present configuration. Another point of interest is the intersection of the celestial equator and the observer's meridian. This point is directly above the south point, so it must have an azimuth of 180 degrees. Looking from the side of our simulation, one can see that the altitude of the north celestial pole is equal to the latitude, and the celestial equator is 90 degrees away, so the intersection must be at an altitude of 90 minus the latitude, or about 49 degrees here. If I change our location to more southerly al latitudes, the altitude of the north celestial pole decreases until at the equator, we see the north celestial pole at the north point on the horizon and the south celestial pole at the south point. As we continue to move into the southern hemisphere, we can now see the south celestial pole above the south point at an altitude equal to the latitude and the intersection of the celestial equator and the observer's meridian is now above the north point at an altitude equal to 90 minus the latitude. Let's ask students about a few special locations. We move to the North Pole and can ask, where is the North Celestial Pole in the sky? Note that our general rule still works. We are in the Northern Hemisphere, so we see the North Celestial Pole at an altitude equal to 90 degrees above the North Point, which puts us at the zenith. Where is the Celestial Equator in the sky? The Celestial Equator must be 90 degrees away from the pole, so right at the horizon. Let's set the latitude to 40 degrees and investigate star trails. When students are asked about the path of a star that travels through their zenith point, many state the misconception that the star must have risen at the east point of the horizon. Let's investigate this by placing a star at the east point on the horizon. I note that the animation option is set to continuously and click start animation. The star follows the celestial equator and when it crosses the observer's meridian isn't anywhere near the zenith. One can clearly see in the celestial sphere view that this star is on the celestial equator. This simulator also has the capability to show the, the angle the star's path makes with the horizon is 50 degrees or 90 minus your latitude. Let's simulate the path of a star that does actually go through the zenith. I click on long star trails to illustrate the path and click start animation. Although this is a rise and set star and not a circumpolar star, it does rise and set fairly close to the north point on the horizon. We can estimate a rising azimuth of about 30 degrees for this star that passes through the zenith. In the celestial sphere view, you can see that this star has a declination of 40 degrees equal to the latitude of the observer, which must be true for a star that passes through the zenith. The star trail, like all other star trails and the celestial equator, is a circle centered on the axis between the north and south celestial poles. A good way to teach declination ranges is to let students see for themselves that there are A, stars that are always above the horizon, B, stars that are always below the horizon, and C, stars that rise and set. Let's set the simulator for a latitude of 30 degrees north and click the Add Star Randomly button repeatedly until we have about 25 stars on the spheres. Select long star trails and animate continuously.
we can now ask students, are there stars that are always above the horizon? Yes, around the North Celestial Pole. Are there stars that are always below the horizon? Yes, circling the South Celestial Pole below the south point on the horizon. And we can see stars rising in the east and setting in the west. Let's next try to develop some intuition related to the actual values of declination in the ranges. Let's move to the North Pole at a latitude of 90 degrees north and repeat our questions. What are the declination values for the circumpolar stars? And they are everything above the celestial equator from 0 to plus 90 degrees in declination. What are the declination values for the never rise stars? and they're everything below the celestial equator. Are there any stars that are rising and setting? Well, not here when we're at the North Pole. Let's now go to the equator and repeat our questions. Are there any circumpolar stars? Nope. How about rise and set stars? Yeah, they're all rise and set stars from the equator, and there aren't any never rise stars. Note that there are three checkboxes in the appearance settings for the three declination ranges. Let's return to 30 degrees north and select Show Circumpolar Region. If we create a star right at the north point, we see that it has a declination of plus 60 degrees, 90 minus your latitude. So the circumpolar region is from plus 60 to plus 90. The never rise region is symmetrical in the other hemisphere, and we can create a star at the south point of the horizon and see that it has a declination of minus 60 degrees. The never rise region is everything that is left from minus 60 to plus 60. Please visit the Nebraska Astronomy Applet Project on the web for this and other high-quality astronomical simulations.